welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite species. Um, I've actually also been getting a lot of requests for this, and that's going to be Homo neanderthalensis, or commonly referred to as just Neanderthals. I'm sorry if I sound a little bit off today. I've been sick for the past couple days, but I just wanted to make sure I went ahead and got this video made and uploaded for you guys. So let's go ahead and just jump right into it. So the name Neanderthal came from the Neander Valley in Germany. The first fossil was found in 1856. Neanderthals are the closest relative to humans, showing that we had a common ancestor with them. Um, and it's thought that the lineage broke off around 500 to 650,000 years ago. Neanderthals emerged during the Pleistocene and lived in Eurasia all the way from the Atlantic coast all the way to Central Asia and they lived as far north as current day Belgium and as far south as the uh, Mediterranean. They lived during the last ice age of the Pleistocene and inhabited some of the most uh, harsh environments known to ever be inhabited by humans. This region is full of limestone caves which is great for bone preservation and this is also where we get the term uh, cavemen. They were originally thought to be more bronze than brains um, they even originally had some scientists suggesting that they be called homo stupidus. Over the last 150 years, this has been disproven with extensive research. They had a low vaulted cranium with large orbital and nasal openings. Um, this large nasal opening would have created a very big, wide nose, which would have allowed them to warm and moisten the air as they breathed. They also had a prominent brow ridge bone. And they also had a very large occipital region on the base of their skull, which would have served as an anchor for their large neck muscles. They had front teeth a lot larger than humans, and the dental records show that they have been worn down a lot, and so that would indicate that they were used as tools or even a third hand. Um, and this wear indicated that most of them were probably right-handed. Although their front teeth were much larger, their premolars and their molars were about the same size as humans are. They didn't have pronounced chins like we do, and their mental foramen, which is the hole in the skull where the jaw muscles come through, uh, that was a lot farther back on their skulls than they are on ours. So they had wide hips and shoulders, and they had short, stocky bodies with extremely muscular arms and legs, and the lower parts of the extremities were really short and this would have been to protect themselves from the extreme temperatures. Um, also, have, also having these short limbs would have provided them with an advantage in close range hunting techniques. They also had less of a lumbar lordosis, which is the curvature of their back. On average, they ranged anywhere from 4'11 to 5'7, and they weighed anywhere between 140 to 180 pounds. They lived mostly on meat, but they also ate a couple plants and, and fungi, and they occasionally ate shellfish when it was available. Early Neanderthals are thought to have been bigger than those who came later, but they still remain the same weight across time. Cranial capacity was similar to humans, around 1,200 cubic centimeters. Um, they hunted mammoths, bison, and reindeer mostly. Um, this goes to show that they were proficient hunters who were extremely intelligent and that they were able to communicate with one another. Originally it was thought that they weren't able to speak given that the cranial base of their skulls was flattened, which is similar to humans under the age of two. However, in 1983 in Israel they found a hyoid bone, which is the little bone in your neck that is essential for speech, and this bone would have belonged to a Neanderthal, which proves that they would have been able to speak. Even though they were able to speak, they wouldn't have had as big of a range in sound tones that humans do, and the hole between their throat and their tongue was a lot smaller than ours, which means that their voices would have been high-pitched and um, nasally, rather than the ex like low, brutish sounds that they are typically associated with. So remember how I said that they were right-handed earlier? Well, that goes to show that they had lateralization of the brain, which means that the two hemispheres were able to do different functions. And this lateralization is essential for being able to speak. So not only did they speak like us, but they also had complex societies and cultures. They wore loose clothing, which is thought to have been to protect themselves from the extreme cold. They also had the ability to create fire, which also would have been essential for their survival. They created tools, 
using the Mousterian theory, which basically they take the flakes and they start chipping away at the triangular base of the tool and then come back and with a stone hammer and smooth it out. There has been evidence of blade technology in Portugal and France. They found tools that would have been to um, sharpen spears or kill or process animals or even to prepare food with. They also found tools that were used for more domestic purposes such as tanning hides, punching holes for clothing, or even to cut wood or bones with. They had long-term residences which proved that domestic spaces were used over time. There were hearths near the sleeping areas. There was even kitchen debris found like um, animal bones. They also had short-term residences such as just a campsite for the night or even uh, places used on just a seasonal basis. There's also been evidence found of cognitive function beyond just the basic survival. So they, there were artifacts found that are more based on their beauty rather than on their function. Like there have been or ornaments or colorants made from natural pigments or uh, even bones that were d had designs cut out of them. Feathers, claws, and shells were often worn or even used in cave art. Yep, cave art. So the oldest cave painting ever found is in Spain and is dated to be 65,000 years old. This is way before any humans were ever in the area. They also found seashell beads and pigments that have been dated to at least 115 years old. Some people don't want to believe that Neanderthals were able to create symbolic art, but the evidence shows that it wasn't humans. Um, however, there are some people who also think uh, that Neanderthals were maybe not even their own distinct species, but rather a subgroup of modern humans. The most humanesque practice they had was the burial of their dead. They buried them in stone-lined pits, and they often buried families together. Um, they have found traces of flowers in the graves that were not found to have been native to the area, which means that they were placed in the grave. Um, it's also thought that they had an afterlife because, similar to the Egyptians, they placed tools and food in the graves as well. We don't know what wiped out the Neanderthals, but there are a bunch of theories. The most common one is that because of the climate changing out of the Ice Age, it affected the animals and the plants, and therefore the Neanderthals weren't able to sustain themselves, especially given that they needed to eat a lot more than humans did, so they would not have been able to compete with us. However, some people think that um, humans came in and just completely wiped them all out. However, they coexisted with each other for thousands of years, and they is even evidence that they interbred and some people now, especially those who have European ancestry, have about a 2% Neanderthal DNA in their system. It's also thought that their extinction was staggered and not just all at once, so therefore it, it wouldn't really make sense that humans came in and wiped everyone out. There's also evidence that a bunch of inbreeding was going on, which uh, makes it theorized that the numbers were deteriorating. Um, and so the changing climate would have made it to where the groups were fragmented anyway and they wouldn't have been able to have these large populations needing to survive. How do you think they went extinct? Let me know in the comments down below. And so make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!